Hello and welcome to Super Three Women in the Startup Ecosystem, the show that talks about the journey, challenges, and the path that lies ahead for women in the startup ecosystem. We put light to make women realize that no less than the sky is the limit for them in this emerging world of startups. I'm your host, Oshika Ghosh. Super Three Women in the Startup Ecosystem. is a podcast series by the department for promotion of industry and internal trade dpiit is a central government department under the ministry of commerce and industry in india startup india is a flagship initiative under dpiit intended to build a strong ecosystem for nurturing innovation and startups in the country that will drive sustainable economic growth and generate large scale employment opportunities my guest for today is an mba graduate from the harvard business school after giving many years to the corporate industry she is now a successful entrepreneur and an angel investor deeply rooted to the traditions and taste of india she is a super girl for many of us who are always looking for taste and health in a single platter she is none other than the ceo and co-founder of open secrets ms ahana gautam ahana it's amazing to have you here Thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So, Hana, my first question to you would be um, that you would probably be one of the best people to deeply understand what uh, women empowerment and uh, you know gender inclusivity means. Uh, you were born in a small town, Bharatpur, in Rajasthan, and um, access to education uh, is still unequal there. A lot of objectivity is involved. So. Um, what was your take on the situation back then and what exactly turned the tables for you yeah no i think um, i think i'll start by saying whatever i am today is um, because of my angel mother and um, and as you rightly said i grew up in a in a very small city of rajasthan called bharatpur and uh, families in bharatpur you know they had different dreams for their daughters and they had different dreams for their sons and i still remember when i was preparing for um, iit examination my mother uh, was a professor um, and she single handedly raised me and my brother in bharatpur and one of her professor friends she came to our house and she said that you know why are you encouraging your daughter uh to prepare for iit your son has already gone to iit bombay your iit sapna pura ho gaya where will you find a groom for her so that was the kind of environment where i grew up where different dreams were there for the sons and different dreams were there for the daughters they wanted best in class education for their sons but mediocre education for their daughters and they were pretty happy with that it's it's not surprising that you know it has one of the lowest female literacy rate that state and my mother acted as a shield she was the one who protected me from all these norms the expectations the biases which exist and she always encouraged me to go after the best in class education and i think she has played a pivotal role in my journey from bharatpur to iit bombay and then to howard business school to boston and uh, she always used to say one thing that education levels the playing field it doesn't matter where you come from big city small city how you speak how you dress up it doesn't matter and i think i'm very very grateful for those initial years mm-hmm. where i had a guidance from a rockstar woman and she ensured that sky is the limit for me thank you so much ahan i think it's very inspiring that uh, you know a woman played such a huge role in your life and i completely agree with what she said about education leveling the field for everyone so uh, moving on to the second question um after howard you decided to uh, you know start your startup in the fmcg industry and um specializing in you know healthy snacks uh, but we all know that there are multiple players in the fmcg industry who are doing similar work so um you know according to you what is it that differentiates your product your offering from others sure so i'll i'll take you maybe 6 to 7 years back you know when i was studying in boston and i remember 
on campus, we would go for grocery shopping. So we'll go to Whole Foods. And the first time I entered the store, I was like, wow, there are these different aisles where there are these healthy, tasty, convenient options for families to pick from. And then it reminded me of my childhood days. You know, my mother struggled to find a single brand uh, which can stand for taste, health, convenience, all of those things. At that time, India was a very supply constrained market, right? There was zero to no innovation in packaged food industry and that was the reason why India was one of the most unhealthy packaged food country in the world and even in US when I was there my sister-in-law back in India she was going through the same struggle that my mother went through so I said how is it possible that the generation later the struggle exists and if you think about India we're a land of innovation you know we're talking about uh, rolling out 5G, we started from 2G. Uh, we have done so much innovation. But if you look at the snacks that the kids are eating, it's still the same maida, chini, palm oil, se bhare hue snacks. So that made me realize that why is India behind when it comes to nutrition? And that's how it became my purpose um, in US that, you know, this is something where I want to be. And it's also a really big industry. By 2026 calendar year, it's projected that healthy or better for you food and beverage is going to be a $30 billion industry. And do we have a whole foods kind of solution in India? Absolutely not. So that was the purpose when I started thinking about it, worked in US for a few years and then took a one way ticket from Boston to Bombay with this mission that how can we unjunk food and beverage for every Indian family. So this was, we started uh, in 2019 and we launched a brand uh, early 2020. At that time, there were not a lot of solutions available in the market. And uh, we started in playing in all the mainstream categories. Like we have unjunk cookies, we have unjunk, now unjunk bhujia, we have unjunk um, chocolate, unjunk brownie, like any big category that that you would assume a family would want to eat, we, we started with an unjunk product. And the whole thesis there was, it's a supply constraint market. Families have been demanding better products, but we as a nation have been has been failing them by not providing them nutrition plus taste plus convenience and all of that. But as you rightly said, what we also saw that in the last couple of years, there has also been a good supply of brands, brands which are doing some amazing work. You know, there are some brands in tea, so there are some brands in juices. So there was a supply which was getting built, which was not there when we started. Um, and also from a demand perspective, from a consumer perspective, I I still remember the conversation from a mother and she said ahana i love your snacking portfolio i come to your website i buy cookies and chocolates um, for my family but you know i have to go to someplace else to find a better for you or unjunk tea or an unjunk coffee and then we said you know how can we serve this customer better and we realized it makes a lot of sense to become a one-stop destination and to become a platform so from a journey which started as a brand now we are actually a platform and when we think about all the other brands who are doing amazing work they are now partners as because they are also listed on a platform so i do not see brands as a competition i actually believe in the mission how can we unjunk food and beverage for every indian family and we want to take the entire ecosystem along with us so now that's the reason because there is supply because customer wants to go to one destination where they can shop the entire basket and can check out. We have partnered with more than 100 plus unjunk brands which are currently available on our website. And we're also building an omni-channel platform. So you can buy online, you can also buy offline. So the whole idea is we are here to serve the customer, whatever the customer wants. And we're going to take the ecosystem along with us. That's really inspiring. And I think then aggregation plays a huge role in this particular situation. Um, so Ahana, Open Secret also closed uh, its Series B funding this year. So congratulations on that firstly. Uh, but how has the process of fundraising been for you as an entrepreneur? So I would say very, very grateful in the sense that we have closed three rounds of funding so far. And all the three rounds have been inbounds. Um, so uh, I remember the first round which I raised, it was just an idea on a piece of paper, did not even have a product, but had amazing investors like Matrix, uh, Vijay Shikha Sharma from Paytm, uh, Snapdeal founders, Vivek Kambi, they all uh, came on board because they believed in the problem statement uh, and they also believed in the team that uh, we were building. 
um, and then similarly uh, series A and series B uh, we had six cents come in and then Ananta come in all were absolutely uh, inbound so have been very grateful in that way and some of the things which have really helped us is I would say first is momentum we have grown 10x in the last 18 months so the trajectory has been uh, very very um, inspiring uh, at least and it has been a great learning experience second also as i was saying that you know we are playing in a big market it's a 30 billion dollar market and we want to become that trusted destination for um, for 100 crore um, indians and then of course the third thing is the team um, I have realized that if you have this big mission and if you have this big idea, the big change that you want to bring um, here, unjunking uh, food and beverage, you need to have a very strong team of execution. Idea is just 1%, 99% is execution. And that's the reason, um, you know, very focused on building one of the best teams when it comes to consumer goods startup. Uh, consumer tech startup. So we have for folks from again Harvard Business School, I'm in the Bad IIT, who are best in what they do. But most importantly, they're also very driven by purpose. Uh, because I do believe that a lot of good people who had multiple options, multiple opportunities, decided to join Open Secret because they believe in the mission um, and the purpose that we are uh, going after. Great. I think a purpose-driven team is, uh, you know, ideally what every founder looks for. And congratulations on finding that. Um, so, you know, similar on the same lines, um, in the process of raising funds, has there ever been an instance where you faced any particular challenge um, because of you being a female founder? And if yes, how did you tackle that situation? You know, it's it's uh, when I think of it, it's really funny because my entire journey, I have been in rooms where some where most of the time I was uh, I was the only female. So I give you the story of growing up in, in Bharatpur, right, where people were even questioning that why, why am I dreaming big? Starting from there, even in IIT Bombay, we were 28 girls in a class of 600. Uh, again, we were in minority. I remember my first job out of college, um, I, I worked with uh, Procter & Gamble and I was um, I went to a plant and it, there was a team and I was one of the only female in that team building a manufacturing site. So it has always been the case that um, I was the minority or I was uh, the only female in the room. So that really taught me that, you know, um, how to how to tackle these situations. So when I entered these rooms, I would say that I was a little prepared. But one thing which I wasn't prepared was the subconscious biases. Even I wasn't aware about these subconscious or unconscious biases which exist. And it is definitely, it becomes harder at the top. Because when you think about all these informal bondings which are happening, and you know, I went to a few of these Diwali parties and I was just scanning through the room, filled with men, playing poker games, having cigar and you just you can count the number of women are there in that room right and their informal connections trust all these things play a huge role right so that is something which i have realized that it's extremely important uh, to bring in more women so that every panel discussion every event every networking thing that is happening there is an equal representation from both the gender so that it, it becomes a more comfortable, more inclusive thing which is happening. So yeah, I'm more aware about these unconscious biases, but uh, unfortunately, you know, you have to, you have to learn to enter a room filled with men and you need to have uh, your data, your numbers, and of course your passion that will make a difference. So Hana, you've also turned the table by becoming an angel investor yourself. So what is it that you look for in startups when you decide to invest in them? So again, I would say very similar to as I'm thinking about my own startup, right? The first and foremost is a problem statement. I would say I would define myself as a problem solver. Uh, I'm, I get very excited um, when it comes to solving a problem. And this is something which I tell to my team also. You know, whenever there's a difficult situation, there are two ways to react to it. One is, oh my God, what should we do? Or second is, okay, this has happened. How can we solve it? So I think A, problems, which I feel um, are, are big enough problems, which will, what does that mean? Big enough is 
millions of people can um, can be benefited if that is solved so that's number one and then number two of course i think it's all about the team the founder do i think the founder has the uh, the passion um, in order to solve the problem is the person the right person to solve the problem so these two things um, problem statement and of course the founder and the team uh, so uh, on the similar lines um, there's a very low percentage of female representation in the venture capital and larger investing industry um, why do you think that is and what can we do to increase participation of women in VCs that's a great question and I would say this problem is not just limited to venture capital. Um, it is a corporate workforce problem. And I was looking at this data and it just blew my mind. Do you know the female workforce participation in 2010? How much was it? It was 20% plus. Take a guess how much it would be in 2022. Take a guess. Uh, at least 30% plus. So what I read, it was less than 10%. It's actually moving in the backward direction and that just blew my mind that you know and that's the reason why we need initiatives like this because it's not going in the right direction and now coming back to a question I think there are three reasons first of course is the societal expectation the norms right um, and I'll share again um, a small story I still remember, so of course, you know, while growing up in Bharatpur and now I've spent years in, in big cities like Bombay, um, I have not been to the smaller cities um, in the last decade, but um, I lost my mother during uh, COVID wave two. And I remember I went, I was there and after cremating her, I just went to see my old home. I just wanted to spend some time there. And what I saw just broke my heart. Their roads were made, everything. I think there was definitely changes happened in the infrastructure in that city. But in that house, there was a small little, I think, young girl, maybe 10 years old, who bahar bed ke aata maar rahi thi. And this was in like a couple of years back. So imagine, and I thought, okay, a lot hasn't changed. People mm -hmm. still have these predefined roles, which are so different for women and so different for men. So we have to ensure that, you know, we are sharing stories. And I do feel that stories are the most powerful way to drive change in society. So A, there are these societal norms and it will require a lot of hard work, right? These things can't be changed That's overnight true. and each one of us, we need to play a, a, a significant role in that. So definitely that needs to happen. Second, I think importance of role model. It's very difficult to dream something which you have not even seen. Um, and for in my case, my mother was an example. Imagine in a small city like Bharatpur, she single-handedly raised me and my brother and she taught me nothing is impossible. I saw her doing everything, paying my fees, uh, cleaning the house, making food for me and she was a superwoman for me. And when I saw her, I was like, you know, women can do everything. And she made me fearless. I, I don't think there's anything I think I can't do. And that's because I had a role model in front of me. Unfortunately, there's so many young girls out there across the city. They don't have access to that. But now with this, with this platform that you guys are creating with Internet, you can actually have these stories um, shared across the country. So that's second. And then third, I will also think that leaders, um, government, and companies, they need to create an ecosystem where women can thrive. What do I mean by that? As a women leader, what steps am I taking to bring more and more women onto this journey? And it's extremely important to not just talk about it, but also do something about it. In my leadership team, 50% is women. Uh, the products that we sell, open secret products, they are manufactured by women on the shop floor. And because I truly believe we really want to make women um, empowered, make them financially independent. So I said, you know, manufacturing, you don't think women working on the shop floor, we're gonna hire women from local communities. So that's what we did. Um, in fact, we also started this mother program where we are bringing more women back to the workforce because they need flexibility. They need to have a choice to work from home if they have to, you know, when they have children. So I think as a leader, um, we need to ensure that we are doing our best 
to encourage and to bring more women uh, back to workforce and it's it should not be a choice it has to be a responsibility so these three things the societal uh, burden norms second lack of role model um and third is how can corporates and government create an ecosystem where women can thrive uh, but i'm very optimistic and very hopeful uh, that with these initiatives with more women leaders and of course having men as allies we will be able to make a positive change and it's very inspiring to know how committed you are to bringing in more women into the workforce um and as you rightly said through super 3 we are trying to do exactly that we're trying to create a platform where more and more women can become community role models for other budding entrepreneurs so as we seek to inspire more and more women to become entrepreneurs and build their startups into renowned brands what would you suggest they do and what would your uh, tips would be for them if they want to you know pitch to their investors pitch to customers or face the critics i think the traits of a successful entrepreneur it's the same um whether you are a man or you are a woman so i think all of those things exist having said that it is definitely 10x harder for a woman to succeed in the men's world and i'll be i i never used to think that way because i was also not aware of my own unconscious biases but it's it's i'm very very clear about that so what do you need is you need res- resilience you need to have a thick skin and you need to be at it so you know there will be events where you might not feel welcomed where you might feel a bit uncomfortable you might be entering into a room full of men uh but you have to be at it you have to create a seat at the table and you also need to create more space for more women at the table so i think one uh, muscle that you have to build is resilience okay so ahana we have a set of very exciting rapid fire questions for you okay and uh, we'd like to go first now yeah So, which is your favorite book? How will you measure your life? Um, it's it's a great read, and I would recommend everyone if you want to figure out what's your purpose, what's the meaning, uh, a must read. Who's your favorite author? Clay Christensen. He's also the author of How Will You Measure Your Life, and he also wrote this fantastic business book called uh, Innovator's Dilemma. So that's also an, another recommendation I would give. Perfect. Or uh, which one's your favorite quote? it's uh, these are the words i think my mother used to tell me rahiman chup hai baithiye dekh dilan ke fail jabni ke din aayenge tanak na lagi de and it means uh, have patience be resilient good times and good days will come and it's also so apt you know during your entrepreneurship journey there are ups and there are lows and these all these words always stay in my mind absolutely also who's your favorite influencer I would say I try and learn from every single person but uh, the mothers on the shop floor they inspire me so much you know they are so fearless they treat the manufacturing uh, um uh, room as their own kitchen they will keep it clean they will make food with so much love um and they they are uh, taking charge of their lives so uh, I just I'm just so driven and so inspired by their fearlessness so what's your go to pastime or any activity that you pick up to unwind most of the time i'm actually working and the reason i am working uh, all 7 days is because i love what i do and i do feel it's a privilege to wake up every morning and to do something that you're so passionate about but uh, every sunday morning i spend time with my niece uh, we we live pretty close to iit bombay so we go and there are ducks and rabbits on campus and we we go and feed them every sunday morning and uh, who's your role model um uh, it has to be my mother um uh, as i said whatever i am today is because of her uh the fearlessness the strength challenging the status quo um and just believing in yourself i think all of these things i have learned from her and what's the if there's any one quality that you value the most in a person what would that be i would say being purpose driven um i i realize that entrepreneurship is a roller coaster journey there are days the days of highs and there are days of lows it's very easy to imagine or think that highs are because of the work that you are doing and low you you might question 
why you're doing this is so difficult but if you have purpose as your north star it will always show you the light in the darkest tunnel and um, and i think when someone is purpose driven you know whether it becomes difficult or whether it becomes easy you will always put your head down and you will keep building so that is a trait which i admire the most and i also look for this when i'm hiring for open secret so that brings us to the last rapid fire question how would you like to be remembered unapologetic tortoise and uh, the two words that i picked unapologetic it's because it's important to be an authentic version i realized that you know in my early years it was about the rat race um you have to clear an entrance exam um or you have to build your resume very much about the external validation and it took me years to understand that it's so important to do something because it's meaningful for you um and uh, it's driven by the purpose that you have in life so that's number 1 and number 2 is for me it's always about learning um i don't know any other girl who would had the kind of journey that i had which is from bharatpur to iit bombay and to harvard business school and and it's extremely important for me to keep learning to be a better version when i went to iit i didn't know you know how to speak in english what to talk how to dress up all of that i taught myself all these things and i think it's extremely important to have that learning mindset um and now when i was building a brand and now building a platform i think this is something which i want to uh, keep doing and i'm hoping that uh, as i stay authentic as i keep learning i also create a, a meaningful difference in the world that's really interesting so that brings us to the end of this show um but you know lastly is there anything that you would like to say to our budding women entrepreneurs can i say two things <laughs> sure i would say first believe in yourself i think we talk a lot about what tools or resources can we give to women founders or women leaders i don't think they need any extra tools or resources you have role models in front of you have big dreams don't cut your dreams and uh, hopefully that dream will ignite a fire within yourself which will be good enough to take you to places so just have that faith in yourself and the second is a request that as women leaders um we make it our responsibility to bring more and more women to create a space on this table for more and more women out there as i was saying that you know the trends are not uh moving in the right direction and we need every every voice and i am very very vocal about it and also not just talk about it but also do something about it absolutely thank you for that ahana and thank you so much for sharing your remarkable journey with us it was an absolute pleasure to have you on super 3 no thank you so much for having me and i'm so glad uh, that you are leading this initiative as i said stories are the most powerful way to bring an impact or to bring a change in society and i'm really grateful that you guys are leading with this on that note i oshika ghosh would like to say goodbye we will be back with another episode of super 3 women in the startup ecosystem powered by startup india dpiit till then my ladies keep dreaming setting goals and staying determined to achieve what you desire thank you